Welcome everyone to our webinar, Geometric Dim Dimensioning and Tolerancing. Why do we hate it? Why do we love it? Why do we need it? I am Rose Kapsha from Tooling USME and your moderator for today's session. For over 90 years, Tooling USME has promoted the advancement of manufacturing by supporting new technology and in industry and the development of its workforce to sustain manufacturing. Before we start today, you will notice on your screen a Q&A box that you can submit your questions or comments and also our speaker's bio. We will try to have time at the end for discussion on our topic. A recording of today's session will be made available on our website at learn.toolingu.com. At this time, I would like to introduce our highly acclaimed GD&T expert, Mike Lewis. Hello, everyone. Um, Rose, I think you were going to go through the uh, the uh, questionnaires. Did you want to talk about yes, that? Yes, so we have two poll questions today that we would like to gather some information. This first one, and if you could do it while we're on live, how frequently do you use geometric dimensioning and tolerancing in your engineering projects? Please select the right answer. I'll give you a few more seconds and then we will be able to see the, uh, the, the results. Give you another couple seconds to answer. And the Here's the results. So it looks like we have quite a mixture of experience within our audience today. Our next question, what area do you represent in your organization? I will give you a few seconds to answer that. Let's see what those results are. So we have quite a few engineers in the audience today, Mike. Great, good distribution. And I will let you take over from here. Okay, I'll take control of the slides and go get on into the uh, conversation. Um, a couple of things I want to mention that aren't in the slides, and that is there is a previous GDT webinar that I did with Tooling USME. And if you uh, ask Rose, she'll be able to give you a link for that. And it was intended to be the introductory course or the introductory webinar to GDT. And so this second webinar is a follow-up, which means we're not gonna talk about the foundational stuff. Uh, what are the symbols? What do they mean? Uh, this webinar is designed for and intended to be kind of an intermediate kind of uh, overview of what's going on. And it borders a little bit on the advanced side, but we're not gonna go very deeply into it. So this is kind of the inter intermediate um, approach. Um, and this is my first slide and I, I, I like to use this slide because <clears throat> as a young engineer, I hated gd &T. If you came to me and you asked me, what do you think about gd and I, I would have like three or four times the amount of things here and it would be loaded with expletives. Um, and so I, I hated gd and I just didn't understand why we had to learn and do something and use something so confusing, so hard to understand and so hard to interpret. And um, the answer is 
not that our our management is trying to punish us. It's provide it's that GDNT answers and and does an awful lot of good things as well. So why do we hate it? It's so hard to learn and remember. It's so confusing. Um, it's hard to know which geometric symbol and control symbol and tolerance zone and inspection technique to use. Um, we are never quite sure about using it. We're never very confident in doing it. And they keep changing the crazy rules and the material condition modifiers. And our company has to spend lots of money to, to have us learn it and train us and apply it. Why do we even use it? And, and the answer is on the next slide. And, and it's not just on the next slide, but the answer is, and where did this stuff come from? Um, is it a punishment uh, for past sins? And the answer is no. It came out of World War II when um, we were in the thick of World War II and um, fighting the war, airplanes, helicopters, all kinds of weapon systems needed fixed and repaired to keep airworthy and to keep people alive. And what happened was the spare parts to keep these systems operational didn't fit. They didn't function. And then the systems had a lot of maintenance issues that kept them out of the air and out of use. And so the U.S. military, Department of Defense, created some gd &T foundational things that were to be added to drawings. And that started out as a military standard, MIL Standard 8. And eventually, the automotive industry, the aerospace industry, and all of the people with close tolerance, very important products, picked it up and said, this is, this is powerful stuff. It will do a lot of things for us, and that's why we use it today. So why do we love it? Well, you're, you know, speaking as a previous hater, um, you know, I'm, I'm now loving this stuff. Um, you can't. You can't convince me it's not powerful stuff and what it can't do, because I've been using this in, this tool for well over 40 years. It's so powerful and flexible, there's nothing we can't do, okay? It's the global language that we use and communicate with, uh, with other people in our company, with other companies, with other industries, with other countries. There are many, many ways to communicate intent, functionality, and manufacturing approaches, as well as quality inspection and assembly. And, and gd &T is the common language. And so the, the biggest challenge with gd &T is that each of the functional people within the organization that uses gd &T uses it and needs it for a different thing. Um, gd &T is guaranteeing functionality of the product because product design puts it on the drawing. And then after product design puts it on the drawing, then the manufacturing engineering and manufacturing people read the drawing and interpret what is there. And they use gd &T to tell them in some, in a lot of instances, how to set the part up in the order that we manufacture the part. And then after we manufacture the part, we give it to inspection and, and quality and we have to make sure that they inspect it exactly the way we made it so they use the drawing requirements to do the same thing. And by doing this, we're, it, ensures, it ensures repeatability of the product. It ensures functionality and repeatability of the product from beginning to end so that there's never any multiple interpretations of what we do and how we do it and what we locate important aspects of the part to or from. It also offers the most potential for overall cost reduction, improved quality, and lowest schedule risk. It reduces confusion in manufacturing and it saves money. But it only does these things when you, the user, recognize its benefits, can understand what you see on the drawing or what you need to put on the drawing, and we all interpret it the same way. And that's why we're going to look at some of the, the tools that I've created that lie ahead in the slides coming up that will help you to do just that. Um, why do we need it? Well, it's because, as I already said, we all have a, a, something to do on our products. And so I look at gd and is the hub of the wheel. 
whether you're working in design, manufacturing, inspection, uh, fixture design, procurement, yes, procurement too, um, NC programming, production, and functionality is really um, engineering um, and, and, and creating the product. So we have to learn the language so we can communicate our concerns, whether it's good feedback or bad feedback or critical feedback or even complimentary feedback. If you can't adequately speak the language of GD&T, you're not going to be able to convey your concerns or communicate the, the thing you really want to communicate. Okay, so I, I told you already I've been in industry a long, long time. I just recently put this chart together. In fact, it was April of 2023. Honestly, it's taken me about 10 years. Okay, now um, this is a really all-encompassing chart. Does everyone on the webinar need to know everything on this chart? No. That's why I made it a chart, so you didn't have to memorize all this stuff. Uh, it's a it's a an absolute awesome reference tool, and that's what I created it for. And so, as we look at this, we have to say there's an awful lot of stuff in here, Mike. Where do I start? What do I look for? Okay, so I've tried to simplify it. First of all, it's color coded. Okay all the form tolerances and um, let me try to uh, get my marker going here hang on a minute this is a uh, this is a new software um, that uh, we're, we're using I'm trying to um, I'm trying to activate it and make sure that it works yeah it does okay so all of the blue stuff well, I guess my finger doesn't work Nope, I got to use my mouse. Um, okay, all of the blue stuff is form controls. And it covers straightness, straightness of a line, straightness of an axis, flatness of a surface, flatness of a center plane, circularity or roundness, and cylindricity. And, and those things are called form controls. Okay, form controls don't allow datums. So right out of the box, we know all of the blue form controls don't allow datums. They can be datums, but they can't reference datums. We use them in a feature control frame, which is the box that we use in the, in the field of the drawing. And we can use straightness, which is there are two options to straightness. I'm, I'm probably getting a little ahead of myself because that's like the next page. The purpose of this page is to not to overwhelm you. It's to say that we have form controls, we have orientation controls, we have runout controls, we have profile controls, and we have position or location and orientation controls. Okay. Now that you know there are five types, we need to look at how we break these five types down to mean something. And the first thing is datums, I already told you, are not allowed for the blue, the blue boxes, form controls, but datums are required for all of the other ones. So right out of the chute, now you know form controls don't use datums. Orientation, run out, um, profile and position have to use datums. So, uh, and then the top of this chart is, is a bunch of information that I'm circling. Uh, it looks like I lost my... Now, these things are going from top left to top right. Datums, whether, they're, whether or not they're used or required. Type of tolerance, form, orientation, runout, profile, and position. Type of geometric characteristic. Well, when we have straightness of a line, it's a line. So the geometric characteristic is a line. But if we have straightness of an axis of something that's a circle, then the, the tolerance, the type of characteristic, is a feature of size. So straightness can be a line or a surface 
or a feature of size, okay? And that's the type of characteristic. The geometric characteristic I already shared with you is straightness of an axis, flatness of a surface, circularity, cylindricity, and the geometric characteristic is all in those columns. And the symbol is the symbol that represents those geometric characteristics. Now in GD and T, you have to understand the symbols. You have to know what they mean. And then we have MMC. MMC is maximum material condition. And some geometric characteristics don't apply if they're a surface or a line. That's why straightness of a line doesn't apply with maximum material condition. And, and so we also have least material condition in addition to maximum material condition or regardless of feature size. We abbreviate them as MMC, LMC, and RFS. And if, if you don't know what they mean, you got to go back to the other webinar. Um, it, it describes something that has size. And so if our straightness of an axis is a feature of size, like I said it was, then we need to figure out, does MMC, LMC, or RFS apply? And that's why this column is here. And so these columns tell us critical vital information about each of those geometric symbols and characteristics. Now, I don't expect you to memorize them, but you, de you do need to know that information, especially if you're a designer and you're picking that symbol for the drawing. And in fact, I have a special chart just for designers, okay? And this is a chart that would help designers, manufacturing engineers, NC programmers, inspection people, anyone who's using and applying GD and T, this chart is very, very handy. And so, um, the, you know, I, I'm going to move on to this column. It's the applicability of maximum material condition, least material condition, and regardless of feature size to the feature control frame datums, but only if those datums have a size, only if they are a feature of size. If the datum is a surface, it's not applicable. And these are all not applicable because form controls are not allowed to use datums. So we never use these controls, the form controls, to orient to a datum. That's why this is not applicable. But everything else down below is applicable when the reference to datums that have size is applicable, okay? Then we have, does rule two apply? Rule two says, if you have a feature of size and you don't put a material condition modifier in the feature control frame, what's my interpretation? And the interpretation per rule two is RFS, regardless of feature size, which means whatever the size of the feature is. It doesn't matter how big or small it is, it's whatever the size is. Any size that it is, is what the, the, the material condition modifier is. And another name for that is regardless of feature size or RFS. So the next column is the shape of the tolerant zone. Now you may not think that's really important, but when you're looking at a part drawing or if you're designing a product, you would want to figure out what does my tolerant zone look like? Is it a surface or is it a center line? Is it a plane or is it um, two parallel planes? And, and there are lots and lots of different shapes of tolerant zones and you need to be aware of that. And so this column tells us using form controls, what my options are. And, and these are my only options. I can't use any of the other tolerant zones down below. I can only use form tolerance zones. And then we have 
radial or diametral. <clears throat> Lots of times when we have round parts or we have datums that are diameters that have size, we have to call out in the feature control frame if our tolerance zone is a diameter or not. Now, most of you are probably familiar with position. So I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to say, okay, here's position. Let's look over here at the column and it says diameter. And when we have a position tolerance that has a diametral tolerance zone, we are required to put the diameter circle in the feature control frame. That means the number in the feature control frame, the tolerance number, is a diameter. But in some of these geometric tolerances, like this one and these down here, the number in the feature control frame is a radius, not a diameter. And so how, would, how do we know? Well, if it's a diameter, we're obligated to put the diameter symbol in the feature control frame right before the tolerance. But if it's a radial, we don't put anything in there. And if we don't put anything in there, it can either be a total wide or a square zone or a radial zone. And you have to look at the drawing and figure out, is it radial, is it square or total wide, or is it diametral? The feature control frame tells us diametral. It does not tell us radial or total wide. So these are some things you need to understand to figure out what's the shape of my tolerance zone. And why do I need to know that? Because we need to measure the parts while we're making them and as they progress into quality and inspection. We always have to know the shape of the tolerance zone. And so who puts all these, these symbols and tolerance zones on the drawing? The product designers. So uh, more than any of the people in working in manufacturing and quality and assembly, the people that work in product design have to know this stuff real, real deep and real and, and be real knowledgeable about everything they're putting on the drawing because if they screw up and don't use it correctly, it affects everybody downstream that's going to open that drawing and read it. So that's, again, why everybody gets something out of GD&T. Okay, so tolerance shape symbol required in the feature control frame. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Why would it be yes? because I happened to pick straightness of an axis, which was a feature of size that if we go all the way over here, is there a tolerance shape symbol required in the feature control frame? And the answer is yes, because it's got size. And so the other, the next column here on the right is the, the geometric controls and characteristics that are itemized in the drawing can also control other things. Form controls do not control anything else, but orientation controls, which are the yellow ones, can. All orientation controls also control form. Do we see that? Okay, so we can also see that these other geometric characteristics toward the bottom of the chart, they control a lot of other things. They control, let's say I've lost my marker here. Um, I'm gonna try it again. Oh, I think I've lost it. Okay, uh, kind of lost my marker. That's okay. Um, I'm, I'm about done with this chart. Um, this is a real high level summary chart and we're really going to talk about each of these areas in particular. The last column though we haven't talked about is, is functional gauging allowed? And functional gauging is only allowed when drawings use GD&T and they apply the GD&T to features of size at MMC. If it's not applied at MMC, then the answer is no, you can't use functional gauging. So now product design, the designers, they may not care about functional gauging, but manufacturing and quality people, they, they love to know this. So 
there's something for everybody in these charts. And I know it looks a little uh, messy, but that's okay. I got lots of these. And here's the first one. Uh, notice how I've, uh, again, color-coded everything. And before I, I get too far into this, I want to show you um, some of the slides, and then I'll come back. Some slides that that we're going to look at that look like there's another summary slide that looks like this. And this is a color-coded chart that matches the previous color-coded chart. All of the all of the form controls that were blue are blue in this slide. Notice if you look at the symbols, you'll see we have profile, straightness, flatness, um, circularity or roundness. We have all of the form controls in the blue chart right here. And this is only for designers who are making a drawing, they're looking at the product and they're trying to figure out which geometric symbol I should pick. Because many times we can pick one of several different geometric symbols. So understand this chart is correlated and color coded to match the other chart. Okay. Now the manufacturing people and the quality people in the webinar, you don't care about this chart because you don't use gd &T to figure out what the, the functionality is. You just want to know how it impacts you in manufacturing engineering or programming or fixturing or tooling and quality and acceptance. And so I want to show you it's there, but we'll come back to it. Hopefully we'll have enough time to do that. So um, essentially the form controls, I already told you that datums are not allowed. Um, we have two types of line um, or straightness callouts. Stay within the blue boxes that I have in front of you. They are straightness of a line, straightness of an axis. They are both straightness, but they have different shape tolerance zones. Look at the, the shape of the tolerance zone column, and you'll see what I mean. Straightness of a line is only a line. It's line elements. There's no size. There's no. It's not a feature of size. It's a it's a straight line, or it can be a curved line. And then we have straightness of a feature of size. Straightness of a feature of size is straightness of a cylindrical part. And 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 the only way you can figure that out is. The thing we really want to check in the feature of size, which is straightness of a cylinder, is we want to make sure that the axis or the center line of the part is straight, not the surface. And so in, in trying to identify that the straightness of this center line is appropriate, it now becomes a feature of size. And when it's a feature of size, MMC, LMC, and RFS applies. Okay. Oh, I got my line back. <clears throat> okay, so here's the two options with straightness. We either don't use MMC because it's a it's a line, or it's a straightness of an axis, which is a feature of size, which means it does have a material condition modifier, and someone's got to pick it. And if you don't pick it, the default is RFS. Okay. Then we have flatness and we have flatness of surfaces and flatness of center planes. Okay. How do I know that? Well, look over here. Here's flatness of a surface, flatness of a center plane. Flatness of a surface doesn't have MMC applied because it's only a surface. It's points on a surface. There's no size that we're checking. But we can have flatness as a feature of size when it's the center plane, which is the, the center plane of a part that is flat that has size. And because it has size, it has a material condition modifier. So I'm trying to get you to understand we have two different kinds of flatnesses and two different kinds of straightnesses and two different kinds of parallelisms and two different kinds of, of perpendicularities. And we have two different kinds of, of a lot of things because some 
are only surfaces and some are are features of size and if you d didn't know that you're missing a whole bunch of the foundational stuff that's really really important so you got to understand some are features of size and some aren't okay now you really need to have a textbook because i'm this chart is really what they base the textbooks on okay this is the answer sheet for all of the issues and questions that you will see in the GDT textbook. I've tried to simplify them, group them, summarize them, color code them. I've tried to do anything and everything I could to help every single one of you because 40 years ago we didn't have this chart. And, and it took me decades to figure out all of this stuff and then put it in a chart. And it's not that it's so hard to figure out. It's just I never used it enough to learn it all until the last 10 to 15 years. And so this is going to help everybody, no matter what your level of knowledge is on in gd &T. Okay, so I started out dealing only with form controls. And we, we skipped a couple. We got line. We have circular circularity or roundness. And it's always a line. Because it's always a line, we, we can never apply MMC or LMC or RFS. And then we have uh, cylindricity, which is also a surface control. And it never, because it's only the surface, we don't have datums. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have a material condition that we have to worry about. And you already know, because I've already told you, forget all of the datum references and their material conditions because form controls do not use datums. All right. I am moving on to orientation controls. The stuff in the yellow box. Those symbols are parallelism, perpendicularity, and angularity. And they are orientation controls. Okay, we call them orientation controls because they are orienting, they are oriented from datums. So you have to have datums. And that's why I, uh, in the far left, it says datums are required. Okay, now are some of these orientation characteristics features of size? Yes, I already told you on the previous slide they were. Some are and some aren't, okay? And the ones that are, are, are at MMC. And the ones that aren't, it doesn't apply. Now that we have datums, when we reference datums that have size, do all datums have size? And the answer is no. If a datum is a flat surface, it, it's, a, it's a surface. It doesn't have a material condition, okay? So if the datum is a surface, then these don't apply to that. But if it does have, if these all have features of size, if the datums are a, a hole or an OD, uh, an outside diameter or an inside diameter, then they have size and they will have a material condition modifier. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. Then I'm moving to runout. And runout has a circular runout that's got one arrow, and a circular runout is a line. And because it's a line, it doesn't have size. But if it did have size, it would be at RFS. Anything with runout is always at RFS, whether it's a surface or a line whether my datums have size or not, RFS, so that's the rule. It's never MMC, LMC, or RFS, or, or it's not MMC or LMC. It's always and only RFS. And the same is true with concentricity and symmetry. Okay? So 
this is how we interpret the drawing. Use the column headings, use the, the row headings, and figure the puzzle out. It's a huge puzzle. And we aren't going to have enough time to do a whole lot more, but I am going to keep going because I got a, uh, another area, and that's profile. Here's the symbol for profile. Profile is also always at RFS, and when it's profile of a line, it's just the line, but if it's a profile of a surface, it's a surface and not just a line. The line elements are are lines that have different shapes, but the profile of a surface are two surfaces that follow a contour or a shape. Okay? So, um, and the callouts, I already told you earlier, the callouts in the feature control frame for runout and profile are radii. Okay? So, I'm moving on. The last one is position. I got a slide just for position. And position um, is the very bottom, the purple stuff. Yeah, sorry about the purple. I was running out of colors. But uh, so here are some of the geometric symbols. So why is symmetry in there when the 2018 standard said don't use it anymore? Uh, the reason is because the 2018 standard eliminated symmetry from the standard. And then they said, don't use it anymore. So if you want to figure out how to interpret it on a drawing that is already in existence, because you're not really required to go erase it, you're just told, according to the new standard, not to use it for new drawings going forward. Now we need to know how to interpret it when we see it on a drawing in the past. And so because it's not in the standard, I put it in my chart so that we would, so that you would have the information to be able to interpret it. So these, these are grouped together, um, position, concentricity, and symmetry. And concentricity got deleted too. So, but it's still in here because we still need to know how to interpret it. Okay. And uh, we have the symbols. I've already uh, circled those. And we deal with MMC and LMC for the applicability of the, the tolerance for position, concentricity, and symmetry. And for position, you have to say whether it's MMC, LMC, but you don't have to say if it's RFS. And that's the assumption. The assumption is um, if, I don't, if I have to have a material condition modifier, but I don't put one on the drawing, it's assumed to be RFS. And that is a point that confuses a lot of people. So be aware of that. Okay? But concentricity and symmetry is always at RFS, just like the other, some of the other geometric controls that are also always only at RFS. Okay? Now, position is the one geometric control that more people use. And understand when you use it, it's a diameter. And we all know that because we always have to put the diameter symbol in the feature control frame. But if we don't put it in there, that means it's total wide. And that means it's not a round tolerance zone. It's square. Okay. Now, what about these things that are radii? I already told you there's no geometric symbol for the radii, for the radius. You just have to understand which ones are radii and which ones are diametral. Now, how is, why is this important? Because it dramatically changes the, the, the tolerant zone. If you think it's a diameter tolerant zone and you're using a coordinate measuring machine to check the darn thing, the CMM is gonna ask you if, it, if it's positioned, it knows it's diametral. But if you're using runout, it also knows it's radial. But you have to know it's radial. And so, uh, it, these are some, some of the confusing things that people need to get straight. And I'm trying to help you to get straight. Wish we had more time, but I'm trying to consolidate a lot of stuff into a short time. So I'm going to get off this chart and look at a part, and then we'll go to that other chart. 
this is a part called the flange. It's bolted to this great big thing. And this is, this is my flange right here. It's got four holes. It could have six holes. Uh, you'll see it's, it's really going to have six holes. It's this part again. It's this blue part. And in order to, to figure out what our flange drawing is going to look like, we have to look at where it's used and look at the functionality of the part. And no matter how we have to make it, the way we define the part on a drawing using GD&T has to mirror how the part functions. So if we look at the part, we see it's bolted to the, the housing. It's got bolts to hold it on. And there's a shaft. Uh, there's a shaft that goes through it, and the shaft spins. And there's, there are two diameters on the shaft, or this spindle, and one of them goes in the back part of our flange, and the other one is the yellow surface, and it's, it's the smaller diameter. And so the objective of the flange is to provide mounting for other hardware that is going to contact the spinning spindle. But right now, the purpose of the flange is to provide the mounting surface, which is this threaded surface, to provide that threaded, threaded surface for the next assembly. OK, but for now, we're using the function of the flange to figure out what the datums are, where they are, and how we draw this part. Now that you know what it does, you can begin to make that drawing. You know that there's a datum feature that we have to say is going to be a primary datum feature, and it's going to be this surface, this flat surface that the part mounts on. And then we have the diameters. My next slide really kind of demonstrates it a little better. Here's a 3D model of uh, a solid model of the same part. Datum A is this back face. Datum B is this inside diameter, and datum C is this inside diameter. And so what we have is datum A is our primary datum. It's the surface that the part bolts onto. Datum B is our second most important surface. And so we're going to call it datum B. Datum C is our third most important surface. We're going to call it datum C. Now, how do we, how do we use GD and T on a drawing to show you that? Here's my drawing. Yes, it's got six holes, not four. I'm sorry, it, a little oversight. Here are my datums, datums A, B, and C. But there's a whole bunch of stuff missing from this drawing. What we're going to add is, um, well, this is where we would start to go through the dis decision-making matrix and say, I need to control the primary datum with some kind of form control. Is it round? No, it's not round. It's flat. Is it curved? or No, it's not. It's flat. OK, is, it, is control required in one direction only? And the answer is, if it is in one direction only, it's straightness. But the answer is no, I want it in two directions. So it becomes this box is control of a center uh, of a center plane feature of size or surface. Oh, it's a surface. Because it's a surface, it's this box. So we are, we're required to put a flatness control on there if we really want to control the form of the primary datum. And if we did, it would look like this. Right there. There's the amount. There's the symbol. There's where it goes. It now says this surface is data A, and it's got to be flat within one thousandths. And if we keep going, we go through each of these decisions to pick the next symbol. And I, I don't have time to do both the decision-making matrix and the drawing. So I'm going to just do the drawing, and you'll have to go through the other chart when you can get a copy of it. So we're going to control datum B back to datum A with some geometric control. And it's a, it's a circle. I know it's a circle because it says right there, I got the circle. It's a perpendicularity within the diameter of, Z, of 0 0.0015 relative to datum A. OK. Is this a feature of size? And the answer is yes. Is datum A a feature of size? No. 
So this is really saying it's perpendicular within a diameter of zero of 0 0.0015 at RFS. Why? Because there's no MMC in the feature control frame. That's the interpretation. Here's the next application. We have a parallelism call out, which is a, an orientation control. We're controlling this surface back to datum A surface, and that's parallel, parallelism. Is it circular? No, it's, it's surfaces. There's no size. It's parallel within a, a total wide tolerant zone of 3000s to datum A. No material conditions anywhere. So this is two separate ways we can apply perpendicularity or parallelism or an orientation control. Then we're going to apply position. And here's the position uh, you all are used to. And that's, that's locating these six holes within a diameter, a position within a diameter of five thousandths at MMC to datums A, B, and C when, I'm sorry, to datums A and datum C when datum C is at its MMC, okay? Datum C is over here, it's got size. Datum A does not have size, it's a surface. So this is a good, correct application. Here, we're applying position within a diameter of 4 thousandths at MMC to datum B when datum B is at MMC. Datum B is here, here's the size, and we're saying the 4 thousandths diameter tolerance applies only at MMC of the thread size and when datum B is also at its MMC, okay, right there. That's what that means. Then I'm adding a curveball. The curveball is profile. Warning, spoiler alert. Do you see a diameter in that feature control frame? And the answer is no. Why don't I? And the answer is profile is not a circular or a diametral control. It's a radial control. So this says, I'm going to control this OD. You see this OD right here? I'm controlling that OD with profile, which is a radial control of four thousandths. It's not diametral. At MMC, when B is also at its MMC. So you see the difference between a radial control and a diametral control using the same kind of call out or the same kind of surface on the part. They're both circular, they're both round, they both have size. We choose to use profile instead of position. Is that legal? Yes, that's very legal. Uh, is it allowed? Yes, it's allowed. I've done it on this example to prove a point. And also to highlight to you, there's a huge difference between the diametral tolerance zone and no call out for a tolerance zone. So um, this is, believe it or not, my last slide. And I wish I would have gone through this, been able to go through this more, but I really have too much information for a 45 minute uh, webinar. But I've tried to include the information for you so you can get a copy of this webinar. And with that copy, you can go through the examples that I, I showed. And um, I can even keep the markings on this example so that if um, Rose can provide it to you, it'll have the markings and the circles and the red lines. Uh, we'll try to figure out a way to do it both if we can. So with that, um, this is the point where I'm going to be turning to the questions. And um, Rose, I apologize. I haven't had a chance to look at the questions yet. I'm not quite even sure how to get to the questions. Um, OK, I, so um, we can, can go ahead me? and start with those. Yes. So um, one question I'm seeing is a radius and radii the same thing? 
Uh, yes, radius and radii are the same thing. It, it's a, okay. a, two different ways to say a radius. I use those terms interchangeable. Okay, um, many people have asked for um, sharing of the previous webinar, which I can do that. I will um, provide that to anyone that has asked as, long, as well as um, copies of the PDF. I, can, I will email those out as well. Um, another question would be... Make them easy, Rose. <laughs> okay. That was is a the joke. center the center is a diameter of 1.25. I don't know if that's a question or just a comment. Is this can you read it again? It says, but the center is a diameter of 1.25. Yeah, so um when we talk about diameters and radii, using them in geometric controls, we have to understand that, that when we call out the diameter symbol in the feature control frame, the tolerance that's in the feature control frame is a diameter, okay? And mm -hmm. that control is applied to a diameter on a part or on the drawing. And when we have a geometric control that uses the tolerant zone in the feature control frame as a radius call out, it is a radius call out in the feature control frame, regardless of how that is shown on the drawing. You can take an OD, which is a, a one inch in diameter, and you can say, okay, the radius of that one inch diameter is a half of an inch. But the radius of the tolerant zone is only like four thousandths of an inch, and it's not a it's not a diameter of the tolerance. It's a radius of tolerance, so that we keep we have to keep apples and oranges separately. Apples are apples are, are diameters, and if we call out diameters in the feature control frame, we got apples and apples. But if I have a, a part that's a one inch diameter and I'm calling it out with a geometric control that's using a radial call out. Now I got apples shown on the drawing, but my feature control frame is oranges. Okay. And so now why, why does this worry? Why does it worry me? Why does it not worry me? It doesn't worry me with using coordinate measuring machines because coordinate measuring, measuring machines are programmed to know the difference. That's why if you use them, the very first thing you have to tell the CMM machine is what you're gonna check. Oh, I'm gonna check position. So right away they're like, oh, go dig out the algorithm for position tolerance and use the diametral tolerance zone. And then it'll ask you, what's the tolerance? And you say, oh, it's 5,000. It already knows if it's position, it's a diameter of 5,000. You didn't tell it, it knows. OK, but if you and if you're using um, a profile call out, which is radial and you you tell the CMM, I'm going to check profile. It's like, oh, radii, radii. And it digs out the, the algorithms for profile. And there's a whole bunch of stuff other than radii and diametral that it's pulling out. And it, it, then it says, what's the tolerance? And you just, you don't even know. You just pull it off the drawing. Oh, a drawing says it's two thousands. And you put it in, you don't even know it was a radius, but the CMM does know because it didn't ask you because it knows. Profile is always a mm -hmm. radial value. And so that's why I'm not worried about CMMs. I'm worried about those of you who are using geome ge geometric dimensioning and tolerancing and you're using SME, standard measuring equipment. You're doing it with an open setup, dial indicators, probes, um, height gauges, all that kind of stuff. And, and you're trying to check your parts to make sure they're good. Or you're using telescope gauges or go no-go gauges or, oh my gosh, there's so many different things out there. 
CMMs got it. They they know this because it's programmed in, or at least I think it is. It better be. But it's the, the standard measuring equipment stuff that outside of CMMs, we got to know this stuff. And, and that's just to verify it. If, and now I'm going to talk to the designers. Okay, designers, put your thinking cap on. When you start to pick the geometric tolerance that you're going to use on your drawings, if you're picking position, it's always a diameter. If you're picking any of the other ones, like um, circular runout is a radius, um, circularity, roundness, and cylindricity is a radius, profile is radius. If you're going to use those callouts, buyer beware. If you're going to use those callouts, understand the number you put in the feature control frame is a radius. It's not a diameter. And, and people, 99% of people out there don't know that. They miss it because the textbooks don't make it clear. They call it, <clears throat> uh, what's it called? An annular. Okay, what's annular? If I'm looking at a drawing of a round part and, and somebody says, and I'm going to draw a radius, they're going to say it's an annular radius. Okay, so the number in the feature control frames for all of the geometric symbols that I said are radial or radii, the books say annular. But when you interpret it, that means they're radial. They're not diametral. So think about it. If people don't agree with me, you know, let me know. Um, for a long, long time, I thought everything in the feature control frames were circles and diameters, and they're not. And so you, you all need to know that. So anyway, long way to answer that question. Uh, thank okay, you, Rose. Um, Do you have anything else? Sure. Sure. Let's go on to one more, um, and then we'll be done here. I've never seen max material condition applied to a surface profile. Would this apply to any surface profile or just because it was a cylindrical feature? Um, no, you can, um, when you apply profile to a non-cylindrical surface, it is only ever at RFS, okay? But if you apply profile to a circular, a circular system, then it, Technically, it's applied. Uh, um, it's it's applied um, at RFS, and I'm not. I, I want to go back. Um, oh, so it looks like in here I applied profile at MMC. Um, so my interpretation is profile should always be applied, whether it's diametral or radial or annular, however, whatever term you want to use, and never at MMC. That's that's kind of the rule. So I think there's a mistake okay. in my slide. That's a good, that's a okay. really good question. Yeah, so um, we don't have time to get to all the questions today. Um, okay. Our hour is actually up, but um, I appreciate you doing taking the time to do this, Mike. You will um, receive emails from on 24 where you can get in touch with us if you'd like further information. And um, appreciate everyone um, taking the time to join today. Okay, Thank Rose, you. I have a quick quest quick question. If there were questions I didn't get to, um, yes. are you going to be forwarding them to me and providing answers to everybody else? That is correct. Yep, we'll get those over to you, Mike, so you, we can answer them by email. Okay. Thank and you all. Thanks a lot. Have a great afternoon. Okay. Thank you.